Okay, and finally, tendus to the back. So, as you might guess, it's as implied. Uh, so, this one, I would recommend really dialing down the tension. I, you know, when I first started doing these, I would just go to the point where there was just, okay, there's some tension. Um, and, you know, you, you'll work your way back, but, you know, at least for me, this was a real doozy. Now, <clears throat> if you want, if you have something you want to hold on to in the beginning and it's available, it's fine. You can put a chair there if you want a little extra help. And you're going to take that tendu to the back. And what's really key here is that we don't, we don't splay, right? In an effort to get the leg back, we don't go into some kind of combre action, right? So I really want to keep that sternum and pelvis connected as I take the tendu to the back. Now, once you get this sorted out, and if you feel like, well, I don't actually need the chair, then you can put both hands just to keep that connected. If you want a little extra, like, okay, maybe we can put our, our shoulder blades, we can help them pull apart. We can go there to counterbalance, right? That's a nice counterbalance. And then if you're really feeling it, right, then you can bring your arms to the second of your choice. And same, uh, same variations as with the tendus to the front, you can add the rond de jambe component if you're really feeling it. So here, demi rond and back. Uh, you can get creative with it. Uh, but again, don't do that until when you can do maybe 15 tendus to the back, then start exploring with adding the rond de jambes.